that. Get back to the box. We're going next. You rude piece of trash. Because she didn't win a race? What the f Are you single? I am. Bitch and Ellie. I am newly single, actually. You know, that that's a good question. <laughs> somewhere, some, somewhere in between. Do you like to watch dating shows? Dating shows? Um, I used to watch like one when I was a kid. I forgot the name though, but um, I don't really watch those mu as much. I am pretty familiar. I was like a big fan of The Bachelor growing up. Um, do they still exist? Over the years, there have been a lot of outrageous dating shows. Sure. And with the newly revamped Paramount Plus and other streaming services, many people are being exposed to some of the outrageous shows, especially the ones that aired on MTV in the mid to late oh. aughts. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, I had an ex who was super into Rock of Love and Daisy of Love. MTV? I didn't even know dating shows were at MTV. I thought it was just for music videos and um, some other reality shows, but not necessarily dating shows. Do you have any dating horror stories? I don't know. I've never dated anyone my entire life, so no. I thought it might be fun to take you through some of the most outrageous uh, dating shows from MTV, and then we have a few that are not from MTV. Okay. Okay. I'm Nick, I'm 19, and I'm a clothing designer looking for my perfect muse. Wait, I kind of remember this, like in the back of my mind. Maybe I've seen like some of YouTube uploads. Green Siberian Husky Country. That, that's quite the combination, Jenna, okay. Yeah, like I, the bus, I saw the bus, and that's like immediately what like pulled me back in. I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. Wait, is she gonna run in those high heels? Oh god. Also, I definitely have seen this show because I specifically remember that bus. We're going next. Oh my god. This is like, it's so awkward to watch. Like, I just, ugh. It was literally just based on looks just then. That's Does she have to run too? Though, or is this like a new challenge? Okay. Okay. What? what? Interesting. Why not? You know what, Nick? I'm gonna next you. <laughs> like. Dude, this is bad for him. This is so bad for him. If that was like a real thing, I'd be like, he's kidding me like I ran in heels like what like yeah next aired on MTV from 2005 to 2008 I feel like I've seen this wait oh my god this was like pulled from my memory in this show one contestant goes on blind dates with up to five people at any moment the contestant can yell next if the contestant chooses not to say next they would give their chosen dater one dollar for every minute that they lasted on the date See, I kind of don't like that part. Well, I low-key hate the concept of the show. They're paying that those girls trash, dirt money, that they're telling them that they're worth, like, whatever male validation they get. It's just so bad and so mean. Like, why you gotta do, why you gotta do girls dirty like that? I feel like it sets them up for failure because, like, no one... There's like that money prize and, like, they want to probably try to make it last as much as possible so they can get the money and like, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's setting them up for any kind of potential relationship, but I guess that's the point of the show, so. You ready for the next one? Let's get it. Yes. Okay, we got like, uh, oh. All right, looks like we just showed up to house number one. So we got an apartment complex here, pretty nice. It's my apartment. I thought it was Jesse McCartney because I, oh, I was gonna be, I'm like, oh my god, but okay, no. Let's go check it out. <laughs> number one. Oh, okay, wait, no. I, I know exactly what this show is. They did it with um, Zach Efron. And yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Oh, oh, I do know that. I do know this. I've, I've seen this show. Hang on, what's it called? I like it when they put the girls together. That's what I was thinking about the next one, too. Like, they were all together. I saw the mess in the room, and I'm like, oh, that's so embarrassing. Was he an actor, too? All right, I thought he was. 
gonna go open those drawers. I'm like, bro, that's, I don't. <laughs> Especially if someone's coming over, like if I didn't know, like a, a guy I don't know is coming over, then I would have totally made my room. Well, a lot to unpack. I can't believe this is on like MTV, which is like national television. Here get my rubber gloves for this one. <laughs> All right. I wonder. I wonder if that was set there by MTV for the joke. It kind of gives you like an insight into like how people live and how they are, and it reveals like personality. So I don't like. I don't. I think it. It could be successful in like picking the potential person. Yeah. This was Room Raiders. Uh, which aired on MTV from 2003 to 2009. On the show, one guy or girl would get to raid the room of three single potential dates while those three singles watched from a van. Okay, yeah. The dater would then have to choose which person they wanted to date based solely on what they found in their rooms. At the end, the three singles also got to raid the dater's room. Okay, so you like tick for tack type thing. Oh, okay, so so it could be like a sick room and then, you know, or like a, it could be like a really gross room and then or like a really pretty girl or something like that. Like it is gonna tell a lot about you, but like, I don't know why you didn't just like purposely set up your room to be like a dating profile. Yeah, I don't know, that, that concept's kind of dumb because you're basing it off like just the room and not the person. Usually it's the person and then the room is not too much of a priority. What kind of things would you find in a room that you'd be like, I don't want to date this person? That's like a complete red flag. Um, an American flag. If we were to raid your room, what would we find? You'd find records, Disney posters, a TV, a bed, and that's pretty much it. I'm proud to show my apartment off. I have, I have two walls filled with guitars hanging up. All right, on to the next. I'm Robert. I'm a physician. Hi, Robert. And I'm Patty, a nurse. Hi, Patty. We have a beautiful oh, daughter, Emily. The parents. She's smart, funny, the parents and ambitious. Set her up. This is Emily. She's dating Doug. They've been seeing each other for four months, and Emily thinks they're a match made in heaven. But of course, the scene girl dates that dude. I think I might have seen this too. I don't know why. It's like sparking something in my brain. But he sits down with her parents, and they watch the dates together. Oh, no. Oh, what the hell? I don't think I'd ever let my parents pick so 2000s. I just really love the young 2000s. Loser boyfriend! I would be so pissed. Before you even ask, no chance in hell would I ever go on this show. If like I was dating a girl and, and then her parents signed up for this show, I would just break up. I'd just be like, yeah, we're done. No, sorry, bro. <laughs> Doug. Oh my god, I called it, I called it. What did you think about that? I, I used to love that show. Like, I would still watch that show today just for the nostalgia aspect. This parental control, it aired on MTV from 2006 to 2010. On this show, a set of parents are unhappy with their child's boyfriend um, or girlfriend, and then they choose two singles to compete for the child's heart, and they watch with the boyfriend or girlfriend as each of their choices goes on a date with the son or daughter. I just don't think, like, the choosing part, like, choosing one of the parents fix, it makes sense. Like, stay single, like, oh, maybe, like, yeah, I wasn't dating the best person. Let me let me take some time work on myself, you know? That makes a little bit of sense, but, like, the other, t oh, man, I don't, that's some toxic. Do you think that there is a lot of scriptedness, and do you think any one of those shows is more scripted than the other? I think they're all almost 100% scripted. I mean, it's probably scripted and fake, but it's also funny, and I would, I like, I would do it, like. I swear, I like remember hearing about parental control back when I was like, like I remember that name for some reason, just like in the back of my head from somewhere. I don't know where. The next two shows are not from MTV. This one is called Mr. Personality. sort of made my mark as small as it may be who has only dated men the ordinary way i'm very cautious with relationships must pick the love of her life i am certainly ready to fall in love without ever seeing his face this one's giving weird vibes so slow cool. it really is like living in a that, that is so <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> that must get really uncomfortable because those masks look really like it doesn't even matter what he looks like. It's uncomfortable. 
Oh, they have like different colors. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I would burst out laughing every single time I saw this mask. Oh God, that's just creepy. It's like dating burglars. This is giving bachelor like vibes. I just couldn't kiss those guys in that mask. This is Mr. Personality. It aired on Fox in 2003 for only five episodes. And it was hosted by Monica Lewinsky. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Odd choice. Like, what? Okay. The men had to wear masks for the entire show, except for a special dark room where the man would remove his mask and the woman was allowed to feel his face. What is this? What, dude, what's that movie where the chick's blind and she has to, like, feel the guy's face and he's, like, slightly deformed? That's uncomfortable. <laughs> That's weird. First of all, I don't like it that these are all benefiting the man. This, is, this doesn't seem that bad. Like, I, I'm be honest, the, the masks are hilarious. Uh, I don't know if I can get over that part, but like the concept, it, it all works. Like, like it's there. <laughs> this last one is a little newer, but what kind of dating show connoisseur would I be if I didn't show it to you? It's gotta be. Love is Blind or The Bachelor or something like that. 12 American girls searching for love have moved into an English castle to meet an ordinary guy who is pretending to be a prince. Welcome to the fairy tale. Do they think it's Prince Harry? I, I forget the name of the show, but I, as soon as I saw the house, I've definitely seen this. Like, Okay, wait, Loki, I wouldn't be on this one. I don't know. What's gonna happen? At the end, when he's like, psych, I'm just a construction worker. Wannabe will be elevated to the crown suite. She's so... You know, I don't, I'm not sure he actually looks like Prince Harry, but like, at the same time, I wouldn't know exactly what Prince Harry looks like, so like, maybe it's him with a haircut. <laughs> this is I Wanna Marry Harry. It has become something of a cult classic. Um... I mean, crazy concept. Yeah, the show doesn't seem crazy. I mean, other than like the, the portion where you're lying that you're a, a, a prince. <laughs> I get why. Of all these shows, which one was your favorite? Uh, which one was, I think the mask one is pretty interesting. It's just funny. Parental control. Like, believe it or not, I think next. <laughs> and which one was your least favorite? Um, probably even though I used to watch it next, or like the parental control. I'm probably not ever gonna watch these shows on my own. You know what? I don't think reality dating shows are that like much different than dating apps in real life. You get a quick profile, you're like, yeah or not, like. So again, I ask, what's gonna happen when he's like, psych, I'm not royalty, I'm a construction worker. Thanks for watching React. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Did you have a favorite early 2000s dating show? Let us know in the comments. Check back every week for more awesome React videos. Be sure to hit the bell and subscribe to see more videos like this. Bye guys.